What's happening, M0A Nation? Instrument Pilot Mock Checkride today for the Instrument Pilot Podcast. M0A Nation, it's a great day. I mean, any day I get to talk with you all is a really, really great day. But I have this weird, um, this weird fixation that I really like check rides. Um, I don't see a check ride as an end, but a beginning though, so I really see. In fact, I just posted uh, on the MSRA Instagram, I wanna read it to you. I just posted a quick little selfie sitting here. Do follow us on Instagram, search m 0 I wanna find it here. And uh, username, Aviator305, let's see if I can get a name. And it just says Av Aviator305. Um, commented, fly every flight like you're on a check ride and you'll always be ready. So that's, not, that's not some good stuff right there because a check ride, we spend all this time. And you know what? I, I will get in the mock checker here in just a second. Let me just, for some, sometimes I stand on my soapbox and I, I apologize. Um, we get a lot of support tickets as, as a business, you know, I don't know, 1,200 a month or so. We have a phenomenal support team that handles it all. And overwhelmingly, they'll see that they'll get these questions. Well, will your course help me pass my check ride? Will your course help me with my written tests? And the answer is always overwhelmingly yes. And we spend so much time trying to educate people, and this is not you, this is other people, that, you know what, it's not about just a written test or just a check ride. Yes, you're going to pass that without a doubt. I am in the business of you and your spouse flying somewhere safely. I'm in the business of you with the kids in the back seat flying somewhere safely. You with 300 paying passengers behind you flying somewhere safely. That's what I'm really in the business of. You're gonna pass your written, you're gonna pass your check ride. I love check rides. I love preparing for them. I love the, the celebration that comes with it, but a check ride for me is seriously just a beginning. Just a beginning. Speaking of a beginning, we're gonna do an instrument pilot mock check ride. What we do here, we're taking basically right from our check ride books. You know, we have three check ride books, past your private, past your instrument, past your commercial check rides. You can listen to them uh, anywhere you can download an audiobook, uh, Audible, uh, iTunes, wherever you want to grab it, you can grab those there. If you want two more hours of what I'm about to deliver here today, we'll just spend, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes here together today. I'm going to ask a question. There will be an awkward pause. I'm going to pause. It's going to be a little awkward. You're going to say, why, are, why is there dead air space, Jason? It's on purpose for two reasons. One, I need you to think the answer in your head. If you're, if you're so confident and you want to say the answer out loud, that's even more powerful. Secondly, I need you to get used to that dead space. Do you remember your private pilot mock check ride? For some of you, it may have been recent. Some of you, it may have been a long time ago. But let me refresh your memory. I guarantee on your private pilot mock check ride, there was something like this. Um, what is hypoxia? Oh, hypoxia is the uh, lack of oxygen to the vital organs. And, and then they were quiet and they didn't say anything. And you wanted to open up your big mouth and say, and there's four types of hypoxia. But that's not what they asked, right? What'd they ask? They said, what is hypoxia? They didn't say, tell me the four types of hypoxia. They said, what is hypoxia? Zip it. Do you remember that from your private pilot days? You zip it. And if you're a blabbler, is that a word, babbler? I think that's what I meant to say, babbler. <laughs> I make up words too. Babbler like me, well, I can get you in trouble sometimes. Zip it is my point of all this. Can we get in the mock check ride? Now I've been rambling for five minutes, I apologize. Let's talk about circling real quick. We're gonna talk about some instrument specific questions and then oddly enough, towards the end, I'm gonna dive back into the private pilot book because there are private pilot questions that will live on your instrument pilot mock check ride or your real instrument pilot check ride. Circling though to start. Hey, how much obstacle clearance is guaranteed by a circling maneuver? how much obstacle clearance is guaranteed by a circling maneuver. Again, I'm just reading from the Pass Your Instrument Pilot Check Ride book. It's all there to serve you. How much obstacle clearance is guaranteed by a circling maneuver? If you answer the question by saying not enough, while you're right, in the real world, that may not fly on a check ride. 300 feet, 300 feet within the circling approach area, 300 feet. Two, what are the rules for VFR on top? Question two, what are the rules for VFR 
on top. That was your awkward silence. How'd you do with it? What are the rules for VFR on top? Okay, you ready? Read right from the book. Pilots operating VFR on top must fly at the appropriate VFR altitude, comply with VFR cloud clearance and visibility requirements, comply with the rules of IFR flight, like position reports, etc. advise ATC of any altitude changes. By the way, VFR on top must be requested by you, the pilot. ATC is not gonna call you up and say, hey, good buddy, Jason, two, three, Mike Zulu, would you like to do VFR on top today? It doesn't work that way. You must request VFR on top. It must be requested by you, the pilot. All right, you, everybody good and follow me on that one? All right, VFR, by the way, off topic question, who has ever done VFR on top um, for real. I mean, maybe once or twice in training, I, in like the real world environment, I just can't think of a time I actually used VFR on top. Um, let's say we're shooting an ILS approach. How would you address a glide slope failure? You're on an ILS, you lose the glide slope, what do you do? How would you address a glide slope failure? I'll be quiet while you say the answer out loud or think it in your head. There's really two correct answers here. If you answered it, I would go around. That's right. That's a great, great answer, and that shows good to great aeronautical decision-making on your part. Another acceptable answer is, well, it's gonna necessitate me to pivot to a non-precision approach. Assuming there's there's non that that's an option, right? If I lose the glide slope, I can legally make this a localizer only approach. Instead of going to a DA or a DH, I'm now going down to an MDA, minimum descent altitude. So I pivot. So when you brief an ILS approach like that, in the event I lose the glide slope, this will switch to a non-precision approach, in which I'll take it down to 540 feet and hold right? Until this missed approach point, because your missed approach point likely will change. No, not likely. It will change because your missed approach point is usually a reaching that decision height, that decision altitude, go missed. Whereas an MDA, I get down to that altitude, I hold, 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 and don't forget to start your time. Now, some of these may have a marker, some of these may have DME, but some of these still use time to find the missed approach point. You may shoot an ILS, not even need the time, but in the event you lost the glide slope, you'll be thankful that you started your clock, that you started the timer, because you now have probably a second way, redundancy is powerful in aviation, a second way to identify the missed approach point. Here's another question for you. What is the maximum allowable error uh, for an airborne checkpoint, VOR? What is the maximum allowable VOR error for an airborne checkpoint, airborne checkpoint. I didn't ask on the ground, I didn't ask that. Just an airborne checkpoint. Airborne, plus or minus six degrees. For fun, what is it on the ground, just for fun? Plus or minus four degrees on the ground. Hey, if you, I hope you never, ever, ever have to say these words, but if for some reason you do, if you happen to call up ATC and radio the phrase minimum fuel, what does that permit you to do? If you called up ATC and used those words, minimum fuel, what does that permit you to do? Uh, let me ask it another way. Are you declaring an emergency by saying minimum fuel? The answer is no. You are not declaring an emergency by declaring minimum fuel. What minimum fuel means, according to the Pilot Controller Glossary, is any further delay or rerouting may cause such an emergency. You may also request a deviation to the nearest airport, obviously with fuel, really. I mean, just get yourself on the ground. We'll figure out the fuel situation later. I'll pay extra, have a fuel truck come in. Just get me on the ground. I hope, is my prayer, that you never take it to such an extreme, but now we know the things we learn, right? Minimum fuel, you're not declaring an emergency yet, but any further delay or reroute may cause such an emergency. Isn't this powerful? I live by the mantra that questions are the answers. 
And when you ask questions like this, like it was one thing to ask, what is minimum fuel? It's another thing to ask the question, is that declaring an emergency? And for some of you, that got you thinking a little bit. That is powerful. Questions are the answers. This is true of aviation. This is true of business. This is true of your relationships. This is true of your personal life. Questions are the answer. Speaking of questions, can you please name, don't explain them, just name the four main types of fog. There's a lot of different types of fog, but the FAA breaks it down by saying there's really four main types of fog. What are they? They are radiation fog, advection fog, upslope fog, and steam fog. Uh, hey, let's stick with this theme of force. Name the four main types of fronts. What are the four main types of fronts? You probably got a cold front. You probably said warm front. You probably also said stationary front. Did you remember the occluded front? An occluded front, that is when a cold front catches up to a warm front. There are three main types of icing. What are they? And explain them. There are three main types of icing. What are they? And explain them, please. The three main types are clear, rime, and mixed. Clear ice is a hard, glossy ice. It forms after the impact of, this, of the, usually the supercooled water droplet, and it spreads over the airfoil and freezes in a sheet-like over the airfoil. Uh, sometimes called runback ice. The water literally hits. It's too big of a drop to freeze on its own, but when it hits and it spreads out and it thins out, then it freezes. Rime ice, on the contrary, is this brittle, frost-like. This is created by almost mist, these very small drops, and they freeze rapidly before the drop even has time to spread across the airfoil. If you ever see ice on the leading edge, it looks like a stalactite or a stalagmite. That is usually rime ice. Then mixed ice. Well, mixed ice is just that, a combination of clear and rime. It's described as hard, rough. It forms when drops vary in size or when snow is mixed in with the rain. What are the three stages of a thunderstorm? What are the three stages of a thunderstorm? The three stages of a thunderstorm are the cumulus stage, the mature stage, and the dissipating stage. The cumulus stage, this is characterized by the initial updrafts. The mature stage is characterized at the moment rain begins to fall, we enter into the mature stage. And lastly, the dissipating stage, this is when the storm begins to rain itself out. Have you ever been caught in a storm, it's raining, 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 and all of a sudden everything breaks loose. It seems like the drops get bigger, the intensity goes up. The storm is literally raining itself out. That is the dissipating stage of our thunderstorm. Everything I read to you today came from past your instrument pilot check right. I encourage you, if you don't have a copy, to grab a copy. If you just need that last little bit, that last little review, or just want to be that safe real-world pilot, consider M0A for your online ground school as well. Take a two-week trial, m0atrial.com. Pass your written, pass your check ride, guarantee it, or I'll pay for it, but most importantly, I'm making you that safe, real-world pilot. If you love this teaching style, that is for you. Hey, May 31st, put it on your calendars. May 31st, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, doing a big live stream, a mock check ride, private, instrument, commercial pilot, mock check ride. You won't want to miss it. 8 p.m. Eastern Time on the MSRA YouTube, on the MSRA Facebook page. You won't want to miss it. Add it to your calendars. There's details in the description below on this video, on this podcast. Hey, have a just blessed, abundant, outstanding rest of your day, instrument pilots. And most importantly, remember, a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you.